The human body, as speaking now as a biologist and as a physician, was not designed to deal with the ex explosion of EMF activity in the environment. In the, it's not just in the, in the air, but in the ground, and that's New York City, in the land, in the sea, everywhere. There's EMFs everywhere. You can't escape it. It's in the apartment buildings. The smart meters are in the apartment buildings. And this affects us. You know, we are ultimately an electromagnetic field. Everything that happens in our body is a, is a series of chemical reactions that are electrochemical reactions. Nerve transmission is electricity. It, that, that's the, how it happens. The way we survive, the way we live, the way our brain works is through electricity. The conduction of electrical impulses through nerve axons is how we live. And that's all electricity. We have an electrical field around us. You know, 20 years ago, conventional scientists would laugh, oh, we don't have an electricity. It's like they forget their first year of physiology where they talk about the electromagnetism of nerve impulses. You can measure that now. You know, Carilion field is not just some mysticism or crazy stuff from alternative doctors. It's real. We're an electromagnetic field. And if you don't think that all this electricity, which is all new, hasn't been tested, hasn't been put through clinical double-blind studies to see whether it's safe or not, is safe, it's a big risk. And we're all taking a risk. And I live in New York City, and I'm taking a risk. But then you move out to the country, and you have cell phone towers sprouting everywhere. My friend in Holland said that in the last 10 years, they've built 10,000 cell phone towers in Holland, which is a very small country. There's nowhere to go. You go to Australia, there's cell phone towers out in the wilderness now. So it's everywhere. One of the things that's concerned me, of course, children are the future of our country, of our planet, is that they're basically plugged into computers 24 hours a day. I think even when they sleep, they sleep with their computers. Textbooks are now on computer. You know, when I was, when I was in school, we actually had regular books. They don't use that anymore. It's all on computer. All their tests are on computer. All their communications with the teacher. You don't raise your hand and ask the teacher. You go on, you, you email them. It's all on computer. I see this in my nieces and nephews, young nieces and nephews. They're basically tethered, as, as the word you've used, tethered to the computer all the time. They walk around with their iPhones. They walk around with their iPads. They walk around with their Kindles. They're always on the computer. This is electromagnetism mag going right into their body, which is an electromagnetic field, and there's unquestionable, unquestionable damage from that. And there's no question that this is causing some disruption in their own electromagnetic field. And if we go back to what I said earlier, we are many things. Yes, we're a chemical body. We're, uh, we have vitamins and minerals in our body, but we're also an electromagnetic field, and it's the electromagnetism that allows us to survive. That's how nerves work, which controls everything. And there's no way that you, you're attached 24 hours a day or 16 hours a day, to be more literal, to a computer or an iPhone or, or an iPad or a Kindle and not have disruption of your own nervous system. How is that possible? And they wonder why ADHD is exponential. Why is it exponential? Well, gee whiz, you're, you're affecting the brain with all this electromagnetism. Might that have an effect? No, I don't think it's the only effect. We could talk about vaccination too. But unquestionably, when you're disrupting the electromagnetic field around a child who is very vulnerable, whose brain is still growing right up until they're like 21 years old, the effect cannot be positive. No one is going to convince me that the synthetic, high-dose, electromagnetic assault on the human body in someone who's eight years old is a good thing to the nervous system, which is a very delicately tuned um, magnetic field itself. It's just interruption. There's all kinds of disruptions. And it's going to cause long-term problems. And ADHD is going through the Why is ADHD going through the roof? Look, when I was in school, I don't know anybody that had ADHD. I mean, kids would be kids, and there would be fights among the guys, and you know, we played volleyball rough and all. But no one had ADHD and that kind of thing. I didn't know any. I didn't know what autistic was until I went to medical school. Even then, when I was in school, we got five minutes on it. Now, one out of 50 men, one out of 50 boys has autism. ADHD is so common, it's considered normal. And their, their answer, of course, is to drug it. Well, what's the component with ADHD, this attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, with EMF exposure? I think it's a, certainly a major contributory factor. Why is it suddenly going up? If you look at the increase in ADHD and the increase in autism and the increase in EMF activity, there's a little lag time, but it, the, the curves are almost parallel in terms of the increase in the disease and the increase in use of these I would call them dumb technology, not smartphones, dumb phones, because of what they do. Absolutely, I think this is going to be a catastrophe in them. It's already a catastrophe in the making now. And what we need to do is find some way to salvage the kids that haven't been so permanently damaged and try and repair the kids that have been damaged, which I believe is still possible because the human body is so malleable and so, re so resilient when you give it the right things it needs and protect it from the things it doesn't need. So absolutely, 
We've got to learn how to protect our children. There are things that can be done to, you know, not have smartphones in schools, for example, and try and encourage kids to minimize the use. They're encouraging them to maximize the use because it's convenient and they think it's all, it's all the with it technology that everyone needs. But try and minimize and at least discuss with the kids that there are potential dangers to these things. And I think that would be a first step. Kids have to do homework, although I understand some schools now they're even not going to have homework. But homework is a good thing. You go home, you learn, the, you relearn the lessons from the day, so it really sinks in your brain. I think kids have to do the homework about learning about EMFs. What is more important to any of us than to learn what we need to, to do to maintain optimal health? If you don't have health, you have nothing. If you don't have health, you don't have a future. Even if you don't die, if you don't feel well, you can't produce the way you'd want to, you can't achieve the way you want to. You can't succeed in your career, you can't do the things you want to do, you can't be as creative as you want to be. Without good health, that's the first foundation for any happy life. You have to have good health, and that's so obvious. And children have to be, in school they never discuss what you need to do to be healthy, although I understand now they're starting to talk somewhat about diet and healthy food and not eating junk food, or they seem to get even that wrong. But they don't discuss EMFs as far as I can tell. I don't have kids, but from my nieces and nephews, I haven't heard too much about that. The kids really, parents need to get involved because if it doesn't come from the parents, it isn't going to come from the schools. The schools are bureaucracies. They're very happy to let sleeping dogs lie and not discuss these issues. Parents have to get involved. They have to become active the way they have in the past over other issues. They have to start, you know, doing their, the parents have to do their homework and their kids have to be involved. Now, the worst thing we can do is scare all our kids. You know, you touch the cell phone, you're going to have a brain tumor. But they have to be taught that these things are not, without, are not without a downside that needs to be seriously considered and that there's a price to pay for the reckless use of this modern technology. And there are people, smart people, working very hard to try and keep the damages to a minimum. And all of this has to be researched. The parents have to start getting involved because the schools aren't going to do it. If the parents put pressure, the schools will start looking into it. Get your kids to understand that this isn't just fun and games, that you're affecting your nervous system every time you plug on your iPhone. And people wonder, why are brain cancer levels increasing? Why are these rare cancers increasing in children? Of course it's increasing. Yes, it's a complicated issue. It's the increased pollution. Pollution isn't getting better, it's getting worse. The quality of the food for the average person who doesn't eat organically is not getting better, it's getting worse. GMOs are a nightmare. That didn't exist 15 years ago. GMO foods, I believe, are toxic. And then you get the whole EMF thing, which is like this hidden mystery that no one is addressing. Even people in the alternative world tend to ignore it. It's no longer enough to you know, eat organically and do your carrot juice and take your supplements and do your detoxification, great, but what's, what are you going to do about EMFs if you're living above a router that's giving you, you know, enough electricity to send a rocket ship to the moon? It's a real serious issue. There's no question in my mind that not only are the traditional diseases increasing in incidence because of EMFs as a contributory factor, I'm not saying they're the only factor, but they're a contributory factor that's really, I believe, going to be seen to be really deadly. Um, things I don't like to do is just create fear, which, which is easy to do, and there are a lot of fright, frightening things out there, but one of the our whole approach in our office is that even with the worst cancers, people can get well. It just takes more and more work because the environment is out to get you and the environment. The environment is not getting better. The environment's only getting worse, and that includes the food, the pollution, and the EMFs. People have to become educated. No one's going to do it for you. The, the, the local town council isn't going to do it. The government isn't going to do it. The FDA, the CDC, the NIH, they're not going to do it for you. You have to become educated yourself. You have to do things in terms of your food. You know, find the best quality food, non-GMO organic. Take the supplements that you think you might need and find a doctor that can help you. And learn about EMFs. If you don't learn about EMFs, it's not just a, a missing piece of the puzzle, but it may be like 80% of the puzzle is missing. Um, I've had patients that no matter what they do, they, they, they can't get well. It turns out that someone built a cell phone tower 100 feet from their home and they didn't think that was important because they haven't been trained to think that that's an issue. And I had that particular patient move and suddenly she started doing better. So these are real issues. Now you don't want to say, oh God, I have to move my house. But there are things you can do. Everyone has to become involved in this if you care about your health. If you don't care about your health, just continue watching TV, get exposed to the EMFs, hope you don't get brain cancer at age 50. But if you're concerned about your health, concerned about your children's health, concerned about living the most productive and happiest life you can live, you got to work at it. And One of the most common problems in my practice, and it's gotten worse in recent years, I've been in practice 27 and a half years, and I can see the changes in my own professional lifetime. One of the biggest issues now is insomnia. Even people who aren't cancer patients, and cancer patients always have anxiety, but even people who aren't cancer patients will come in with their biggest complaint is sleep. They haven't slept well in years. 
they can't fall asleep, they wake up in the middle of the night. And melatonin is the, produced in the pineal. It's a wonderful hormone that's derived from the amino acid tryptophan through serotonin. It's very complex, but it's a wonderful hormone that's basically the, the sleep hormone that sets the sleep cycle in humans, and it's really very, very critical. And one of the problems with EMFs that I found, and I believe this to be the case, seen some research, is that EMFs disrupt melatonin, which w shouldn't be that uh, surprising. You know, the pineal, which sits in the middle of the brain, is a very small gland, but that's where melatonin is produced. And it's very responsive to light. I mean, it actually operates based on light. When the sun sets, normally, you know, we're designed that when the sun sets, we should go to bed. The pineal starts pouring out melatonin, and melatonin has a sedating effect. Not only does it have a sedating effect, it has a documented anti-cancer effect. In fact, there are clinics in Europe, conventional cl clinics, that will use 40 up to 80 milligrams of melatonin a day. A normal dose for sleep might be one, one or two milligrams. They're using high-dose melatonin effectively to treat cancer. It not only has a cancer protective effect, which has been documented particularly for things like breast cancer, but it has an anti-cancer effect and is being used in treatment regimens for cancer. Now, one of the problems with EMFs is it disrupts the pineal. And again, it shouldn't be surprising because the pineal is light responsive. Light is an electromagnetic energy. That's what it is. So the fact that EMFs are not going to disrupt the pineal is, you know, it's, it's logical neurophysiologically. We would expect EMFs to disrupt, if anything else, the pineal, which exists to be sensitive to light. As the rays of light decrease as night comes, the pineal turns on and sends off melatonin. Well, EMFs can mimic light. And the light that actually is, when, when the sun rises, we wake up because all light, whether it's synthetic, artificial, natural, or synthetic, gives off a blue wavelength. You can't see it, but all light has a blue wavelength that stimulates the wake-up center in the brain and shuts down melatonin. Now, blue light is an electromagnetic magnetic field. That's what it is. It's electromagnetic magnetic energy, although it's called blue, you can't even see it. EMFs work like blue light. And they basically directly stimulate the pineal, like the blue wavelength, and turn off the pineal, shut down melatonin production, and disrupt sleep. And people will sleep lightly, or I have patients that they, they'll sleep two hours a night. It's because they're not producing any, any melatonin. Why? Well, they were on their computer all night, which gives them from the light, the blue light, but also the EMF, which works like a blue light. And that will disrupt the pineal and the production of melatonin. And it's increasing their cancer risk, there's no question that low melatonin levels are associated with increased levels of cancer, particularly hormone-dependent cancers like breast or prostate cancer. So there's no question that the EMFs are having a profound effect on the pineal, and, and as a result, a, a profound effect on sleep patterns. I mean, insomnia is epidemic. The, the cost of sleeping pills in the U.S. is in the billions, and it's the most, among the most highly prescribed drugs. And what is the, what's the reason for that? It's, it's the melatonin disruption. What's interesting is some of the newer drugs, like Lanesta, are actually trying to mimic the normal melatonin production and encourage melatonin production. Of course, there's a much easier way of doing it, but it's not prescription. You take melatonin. Why take a drug to stimulate melatonin production when you can take melatonin? Or an even smarter way is to try and avoid EMFs, particularly late at night when you want to go to bed, because that's going to have the same effect as blue light and turn off the pineal, stimulate the active centers in the brain as if it were daylight, and you're not going to go to sleep. EMFs can have the same effect as full sunlight, even if you're in a completely dark room. That's why the sleep experts, even conventional sleep experts, tell people if you want to sleep well, keep all the electricity out of your room. Even conventional sleep center specialists, who notoriously are 100 years behind everything, are starting to tell patients you've got to have no computers in the room, um, no iPhone, you can't be on your iPhone. The reason is not only the blue light from the light of the screen, which will stimulate the active centers, but the EMFs work like a blue light and shut off the pineal, shut off melatonin. If you think